Good morning and God bless you all. We are starting a new liturgical season. We concluded one yesterday with the body and blood of Christ being paraded all over the streets, praying for Nigeria and the world. Christ went with that, that journey with us. It's a big pilgrimage for everyone who did it. Thank God for everything we do it. But by entering another season, the logical season, which we call Advent, that is the coming of Christ after awaiting and prepare for Him. Our world is a world of trouble. Our world is a world that is torn apart. Our world is a world that is so troublesome now, but yet we are celebrating Christ. His coming is not coming to uh, for festivities. You can say he's coming to suffer, take part in our suffering, maybe take our sufferings away. But his coming is not something of a verity. It is the plan of God that he should come. That is why he started as a small baby. Starting as a small baby, grew up this same suffering and he went through life. And that is why yesterday the crown is coming with his kingship. He's coming this year, you know, it's not different from another other for other years. But then, how do we prepare for him this year? Actually, with the preparations for elections in Nigeria. With all the troubles we have, with all the floods that is ravaging many parts of the country and many parts of the world, and wars in some places, and kidnapping and killing and stealing in many parts of our country and the world. And yet we have to prepare for Christ. But to prepare for him because it's not to be blamed for what is happening to us. He has done his part, but we are not learning enough. We find it difficult to learn from him and obey his word. Knowing God is also a revelation. Knowing him for who he is as a healer, as a protector, as a man of peace, as one who can console us in our tribulations. We have to await him in his coming. As you know, as St. Paul says in Ephesians 5, 16, that this may be a wicked age, but your lives should be dim it, because you are the light of the world and salt of the earth. Matthew 5, 13 and 14. If you and I are to redeem the world, Imitate Christ in his coming, imitation of Christ. It means we must be able to carry our crosses along from the beginning. We must be able to know where to go and what to do. In other words, we should not be choosing just the soft part, part of enjoyment, part of drinking, part of festivities. Sometimes you have to accommodate suffering or hardship because that is the way of the Lord. Really, we are expecting Christ. Just level those areas that are rough in our lives, those areas in our relationship with others that are not smooth, those areas in our prayer life that are not smooth, those areas our friendship with our neighbor that's not smooth, let us level them to await Christ coming. So that when he comes, we will find us ready to accept him. Our readiness is of many parts. We are ready in prayer, we are ready in unity, we are ready to forgive, we are ready in charity, we are ready to work hard, and we're ready to help each other, whatever way. So our readiness 
is ready at our hand. And as we wait for him, we also say we are waiting for what we are going to do as well. Waiting for outcome of our actions. And of course, we cannot delay him, we cannot deceive him. Whatever we do will be according to our capability. But in all this, we shall be successful if only we obey him. If his will is done in everything we do, then we are ready to receive him. We pray that as we go through the season of Advent, we shall arrive at Christmas with love, peace, unity, progress, and of course, with open hands to give to the poor, with a lot of prayers to support the weak. And of course, where it is possible, we lift people out of their suffering, where it is possible, and give glory to God that they have been used as instruments in his hand, waiting for Christ's coming. And with Christ, the King of Kings, the author of life, and the man of peace, bring us joy, bring us peace and unity, and encourage us in our difficult times to arrive to meet him as we expected. Who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.